Welcome to the next lesson of the JSP. This is the JSP series. We have already talked about lots of topics in the JSP. We had seen the introduction to the JSP. We had seen uh, the features of the JSP. We had already talked about the how JSP pages are converted and translated. We had seen life cycle of the JSP in the previous uh, video lessons. We had covered JSP architecture. We had seen how JSP pages are processed in the video related to the JSP processing. We had already talked about the JSP environment, how we can set up the softwares and run our JSP pages. Then we had uh, seen the JSP syntax and the uh, JSP components, which included the JSP directives, different types of JSP directives, attributes of the JSP page directives, JSP include directive, tag lib, declaration tags. We had seen the examples also. We had seen the JSP expression tag with the help of the examples. We had seen scripted tags. In the previous uh, video lessons, we had talked about JSP implicit objects. We had uh, also talked about the JSP different objects, content object, implicit objects, and JSP action tags. We had seen uh, all the important action tags like forward tag, include tag, bean tag uh, with the help of the examples. In today's lesson, we will talk about JSP variables, JSP methods, JSP classes, and then we'll see how conditional processing is performed in the JSP pages. And then we'll talk about how we can share the data between JSP pages. So let's begin with the JSP variables, methods, and classes. In a JSP variable, methods and classes can be declared, and uh, we can declare them on different sections. So if they are declared in the declaration section, they become the part of the servlet class. Variables that are declared in the declaration section become instance variable for those JSP pages and those instance variables can be accessed from any method of the JSP page servlet class. So how we can declare these variables? It's a simple example here. Uh, we can use the declaration tag and then we'll have to specify the data type of the variable. So here I've specified for an example, a double data type, the name of the variable, sal, and then I have assigned some value. So this is how we can declare variables in the declaration section. As I have already told you that the variables which are declared in the declaration section becomes the instance variables and can be accessed from any method of the JSP page servlet class. Now variables that are declared in the declaration section are also available in the scriptlet section and we can access for example, we can use out.println method. This is the scriptlet section, as you can see. We had already seen the syntax of the JSP uh, with the different uh, sections. We had seen how declaration section is uh, mentioned. We had seen how uh, this uh, scriptlet section is mentioned. So in the scriptlet check section, with the help of the out.println method, we can access this sal variable here and we can print the salary. So this is how we can uh, declare the variables. In the same way, we can also declare the methods. Here it is a simple example of a method that adds two numbers. We need to pass two parameters and that will be added and returned. So now again, you can see here I have declared this method into the declaration section so that this method can be accessed throughout all the functions into the JSP servlet page. So here it's a simple method declaration with the return data type. This is the name of the function add. And we have two parameters. Both are integers A and B. This will sum A and B and return the addition. So this is how we can simply declare the methods. And this is how we can also declare the classes. Again, you can see the class has been declared into the declaration section with the keyword class. So we'll use the class keyword and then we'll specify the name of the class. Inside this class, we can have several variables. We can have several methods. JSP cloud declaration of variables and classes, but no methods in the scriptlets. 
Remember, we can declare variables, methods, and classes, all three in the declaration section. But in the scriptlet section, we can only declare variables and classes, but we cannot declare methods in the scriptlet section. So the variables that are declared in the scriptlet sections are local to the JSP service method and can be accessed from this JSP service method and classes become the inner class of this JSP service method. So this is about the variables and classes that are declared in the scriptlet section because they become uh, local to this JSP service method of the servlet class. Now let's talk about the conditional processing, how conditional processing done uh, for that we can merge the scriptlet and template together in a JSP page. So now you can see this is a math.random function. We have called math.random function and then we have uh, initiated the uh, value of this number variable and this is the conditional processing if number mod 2 is equal to 0. So here we are basically checking whether the number is even or not. And you can see here this uh, JSP tag has been closed and this template that is the HTML simple sentence. So we, can, we are using here the simple HTML. So now you can see this is the JSP scriptlet. Then we have the HTML code. This is called as a template. Then again, we have this uh, JSP scriptlet. And again, we have this template, the HTML code simple. And again, we have this JSP scriptlet. So this is the merging of the scriptlet and templates together. So now this is the condition. We have closed the scriptlet and we have uh, written the HTML code or we can say simple template. But uh, this is the form. This conditional processing will uh, go ahead. So if number is divided by 2 will give us a 0, it will be printed even. Then the else case will be executed. And if it is not like that, then it will be printed odd. So now this will behave like a normal conditional processing. But here we can see that we have merged the scriptlet and templates together. We can see that this JSP page is finally converted into the servlet code. So this is the Java servlet code. So uh, this JSP page is equivalent to this Java servlet code, which is finally converted into the Java file. So int number, you can see if uh, now we have the brackets inside the brackets, this is out.println. So this is the out.println. Here we have uh, merged the template in the direct HTML form. And in the else case, we also have out.println. Here we have merged the template. So this is how conditional processing can be performed in the JSP. So we can merge JSP code and templates, then JSP code and templates to give the conditional processing. Now, uh, let's talk about how the data can be shared between the JSP pages. So we have uh, several methods to share data between uh, different JSP pages. But one of the most common and popular way is by using session object. So all JSP pages participate in an HTTP session. The session object has session scope and this is shared among all the pages within the session. So the session object can be used as a shared repository of information. We can use it as a shared repository just like a bean. And uh, we can share this object among all the pages and all the pages can access data from this session object. So in this example, basically the session object has two important steps. One is the setting the object or setting the data values that is called as the setting the attribute to the session. And the second uh, important step is to get that value from the set attribute. So we have two important steps. One is the set attribute to the session. And the next is get attribute from the session. So let's say we have these three files index.jsp. Then we have login.jsp where we are setting the session's value. And then on any other page, uh, we can access that session's object and we can get the value. So in this way, we can transfer the data from index 
to the login and then from the login to the welcome or to any other page. And this way we are sharing the data in all the different web pages. So let's see on the index.jsp we have a simple form. In this form with the help of the input type component, the text component, we are accepting the user name. So once the user input the username and click on the submit button, the request will go to the login.jsp. Now inside the login.jsp with the help of the request object and with the help of the get parameter function, we are accessing that username and storing into a string that is user. Now the step number one, setting this data into the session object. This is done with the help of the session this is the object and then with the help of the method set attribute. So we have set this string to a session object named user. This is the attribute user and the value of this attribute user is the user name inputted by the uh, user inputted by the user. So now this is the step number one. We have set the value to this session. Now this session object can be accessed on any of the page any of the page on this uh, same website and the username can be shared among different pages. Let's see the example in the welcome.jsp. Now this is the step number two. This is any, this could be any page. In this page, we are trying to get the value of the attribute. So this is session object and then we are using get attribute method and the user attribute. So we are getting the value from the user attribute that we have already set in the previous page. So now uh, from the user attribute, we are getting the username and storing into the user string and we have uh, printed the user value here. So this is how the data can be shared among several pages, among JSP pages with the help of the session object. Remember the session object has two steps. One, setting the data value and second, getting that previously set value. So this is how we can share the data among JSP pages. So I hope you have understood the concepts today. Today we had talked about the JSP variables, methods, classes, how JSP conditional processing is done and how sharing data between pages can be done using the JSP pages and using the session object. That's it for the today's lesson. We'll meet soon with some more information. Thank you for the day today. Goodbye.